Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is David Wood here for TheBlendMode.com and welcome to an exciting graphic design tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about creating a t-shirt mock-up design in GIMP. Now, this is um, actually a request from somebody. I got an email a couple days ago and I knew there was a tutorial on this effect already and I searched around and f couldn't find it and I finally found it in the Way Back When machine but the pictures and stuff had long been gone so here I am recreating it so you guys can see it as well as implementing a few of my own ideas so before we get started on the actual mock-up design let's talk a little bit about what your design is going to need to be printed on a shirt GIMP has a few limitations when when it comes to printing physical things one of those is the fact that it does not yet support CMYK color now if you're using an online service, most of them won't care. Most of them will have no problem printing off your shirt. Sometimes it will result in a little bit of a color alteration in the final result, but overall it should work just fine. Another thing is you want your design to be in the highest quality possible. So as you can see in front of me here is the blend mode logo. And if I go into my image properties, you can see that the size in the pixels is 4000 by 4000, which basically comes out to 13 by 13 inches. This is important, especially for a t-shirt, because if you take a ruler and hold it across your chest, most likely it will go from armpit to armpit. So about 12 inches wide is as wide as you want to design it for a t-shirt. Another important thing to look at is the dots per inch, or the points per inch, which is shown here for some reason, instead of being 300 it rounds it off to 299.999 the points per inch or the dots per inch in a printer is how close together the points are per square inch now for printing you want this to be as high as possible so that you get the best quality if your work's not going to be printed then you don't have to worry about this and can leave it at the default of 72 but when it comes to printing you really want to have a minimum of 300 points per inch you don't want anything less than that in fact if I go into the uh, create a new image option in the templates for these paper sizes down here all of them you can see right next to it says 300 points per inch and it will show you. So right there, this image is 3,500 by 5,000 pixels, and inch-wise, it's 11 by 16. So if you want to design something that will be printed later, you can start with one of these templates to make sure you have the highest quality available. Now, as I said, 300 is the minimum you want to have for printing. Most people go as high as 600 or even higher than that and make sure your design is at least 12 inches wide. So that way when you upload it to a site, instead of scaling an image up because it's not big enough and losing quality, it will scale it down and keep the quality. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's look at a couple of mock-up designs I've already made. In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to add a logo to a black shirt, to a light white or silver shirt, and also to a colored shirt. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously the first thing that you're going to want for your design is a blank t-shirt slate or template so that you can put the design on. Now for this I found a really cool collection from around the web at you the designer. There will be a link for this and this collected a bunch of shirt designs. So there's this collection here with a bunch of different colored shirts and these ones are the ones that we're going to be using these are from designbyhumans.com which is a really cool t-shirt site I recommend you guys check that out and then it's got a couple other ones uh, this white one and this black slash gray one are both from DeviantArt um, just to give you a different options and stuff but we're going to use the actual people models so for this I downloaded a black a silver and a navy blue shirt so let's go ahead and start with just the black shirt. Adding a logo to a black shirt is probably the easiest of all of these. So let's open up an image. I'm going to use the blend mode header image. Now the only problem with this is the fact that the text for blend mode is black and obviously that's not going to show up on a shirt. So I'm just going to quickly invert the color for that and bring that into the t-shirt image. Now obviously we need to scale this so let's kind of move it where we want it and then go ahead and scale it down now because this design is on a transparent background 
I really don't have to do too much to it. I can just kind of leave it like this and it would work just fine. However, I like to be a perfectionist and add an extra detail to stuff, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, one of the things that we can do is give our design a little bit of texture. Now, as you can see in this picture, you can see the noise here, and we can apply a similar texture to our design so that it blends. So if we go to our design layer, we can go to Filters, Map, Bump Map. Now, Bump Map is a fun plugin for adding a little bit of fake 3D depth to layers. So the first thing we're going to do in here is change the Bump Map from the Logo layer to the Shirt layer. And you really can't see anything right now. That's okay, we're going to change that. So if I take the depth and I bump this up, I'm going to put it extra high so you guys can see what it's doing. It is taking the noise that is on the T-shirt layer and it is creating a bump map. So it's basically giving it a shadow on one side and a highlight on the other. Now obviously I added way too much here just so you guys can see it. Uh, we can go ahead and set that back down. I found between 15 and 20 works pretty good. And one problem with this is that it's going to create some darker elements in the pictures. Most of the shadows will be gray, but there will be a few that end up more of a black. And we really don't want that, because we want this effect to be very subtle. And if there's black in it, then it's going to look like the design on the shirt has started chipping, if it's just kind of the vinyl material that they usually put on a shirt. So what we'll do is we'll take the ambient, and this will just add ambient light to it, and we're just going to bump that up a little bit to around 100 to 120. So there you can see it applied it to very subtle, but definitely looks more like the effect has already been placed onto the fabric. Another thing is, because the light is on the left side of his body, the right side has a lot of shadow to it, and it's much darker. So we want to make our image blend a little bit. So if we take our design layer, lock the alpha channel, choose the gradient tool, select a foreground to transparent gradient, Make sure we use black for our foreground color and lower the opacity down to around 50. And if we stroke from the right side to the left, and it will just darken up that side. And it's very subtle, but it definitely will make the effect look like it's already on the t-shirt. Now what about if you have a design that's on a black background? Well, there's a couple things we can do about that. If I open up this fire text image, there's a few things that we can do to make this work. Now we can easily set this blend mode to screen, and boom, we don't have to do anything else to it if we don't want to. We can leave it like that. But if we want the design to look more like it's on the layer, then we're going to do the same steps that we did for the blend mode logo. Only this time, if we go to colors, color to alpha, and in here we want to set the color to alpha to black, and that will just remove all the black from the image. This will allow us to set the blend mode back on normal, and it will have a transparent background, just like that. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing with the bump map. And then also do the same thing with adding a little bit of a gradient on one side. And really, that's all there is to adding it to a black background. Now, what about a silver or a white shirt? This one is pretty cool as well. So in this case, we're just going to use the blend mode logo. Now in this case, blend modes are going to be our friend on light colored backgrounds. So two that work really well are going to be hard light and grain merge. And in this case, grain merge works better for this picture. All I had to do is change that and instantly the design matches the shirt a little bit better. But we can do a little bit more than that. First we can try to remove a little bit of the contrast and the brightness from our logo layer. So if we just bring up brightness and contrast and just lower the brightness a little bit. Now that looks good all on its own, but what about making the logo look a little bit more attached to the fabric? Now obviously we could use the bump map effect again, but we want to do a little bit more to make it appear like it's actually attached to the fabric. Let's just move the design down here to where all these wrinkles are in the shirt. So we're going to take our model layer, duplicate it, and take the bottom one, lock the alpha channel, and then we're going to blur this. So we'll give it a Gaussian blur. Uh, between 5 and 10 will work. And what we're doing with this is we're just getting rid of the little noise details in the shirt. You'll see why in a minute when we displace it. And then we can go back to our logo. 
and make sure that our logo is the same size as our model layer. So go to layer, layer to image size to make that work. Now if we go to our logo, go to filters, map, displace, set the displacement map to that blurred layer. And we can leave the settings alone just so we can see the effect. And right away you can see that it warps it and it's warping it according to the ripples and the wrinkles in the shirt. Now if we select the original layer, you can see what it does is it creates these very sharp and harsh noise elements around the edges, which we don't want. We want the design to be very smooth, because this won't look natural, which is why we blurred the other layer. In this case, we can leave it at 20, but depending on the size, you might go anywhere from having a displacement of 2 up to more like 30 or 40. But 20 is going to work just fine, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And right away, you can see that that warped the design to match the ripples better if we do a before and after. Definitely adds a little bit more depth to it. Now we could take the blend mode logo and just kind of lower the opacity a little bit. But another thing we can do is take that blurred layer that we have and go and desaturate it, move it to the top of our images, and right click on our design and choose alpha 2 selection. Go back to that layer, invert the selection, edit, clear, and then select none. Now what we're going to do is give it a contrast curve. We want to keep the shadows, but make everything else as white as possible. And all we have to do is take this and set the blend mode on to multiply. This will just bring the shadows back into the image, and then we can adjust the opacity of this as needed. So that's how we get a design onto a white or a silver shirt. Well that just leaves us with a colored shirt. And colored shirts are just as easy as a white shirt. We're just going to bring in our layer. Now once we have this in place, we don't really want to change the blend mode of it because on a colored shirt, the colors from the shirt is going to bleed into the design and affect it. We don't want that to happen. So we want to keep the blend mode of this one on normal. And then of course, we can go ahead and do the bump map as we did before and give that a little bit of depth. But then we also want to displace it. So we'll make it the same size as the model. And then we want to do the same thing. Duplicate the model. Lock the alpha channel for the bottom one. And then give it the Gaussian blur. And then when we go back to our logo and we go to displace it, it will be smooth. And then we'll do the same steps as before to make the shadows on top of the design. So it's little things like that that make it look like it's on the fabric and will definitely help sell the mock-up. And that is basically all there is to doing a t-shirt mock-up. So those three effects in combination, blend modes, displacement, and shadows, will make it look realistic and make it look like it's actually on the fabric. So that is all there is for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. And if you happen to use this technique for a website or something, send me a link. I would really like to check it out and see what you guys did. Check out more of the tutorials on theblendmode.com. There are some really cool tutorials coming out soon. I'm David Wood for TheBlendMode.com, and I will see you guys next time.